My name is J.R. Watkiss, and this week, just like last week, I have another special guest. I keep a weapon, now I'm on the gray. I, I was down, now what's up with you? I feel like you're doing it. Since you went away, since you went away, I ain't fucking with nobody. I, I, I. Since you went away. So we're here with the lovely Laurel. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Business and Entertainment Show. Thank you. Is this your first time in Jamaica? It's not my first time, no. I've been here many times, but it's been a long time since I've been in Jamaica, since like 2018. So, yeah. And where are you from? I'm from London, West London exact. What is the music scene like in the UK? I would say, first and foremost, we have some of the best uh, music to come out of London, if I do say so myself. Uh, London is a melting pot. It's very eclectic, it's a, a different cultures, different religions, different races. So it's a melting pot of different vibes. So that's what makes London such a unique place and especially for the music industry as well. How did you get into the music industry? Wow, I have been singing since the age of five. I started in church. It's always in church, yeah. I started in church with uh, my grandmother. She used to take me to church and then I started there. And my dad was in the business and we would have like a lot of popular bands and uh, musicians that will come to the house and practice some, uh, one of them being Jamiroquai. Um, and then from there I would practice in the house, I'd be singing and then I attended stage school and um, for performing arts and then I just wouldn't stop. And then that was it for me. So in church, did you play instruments? I didn't know. I still regret that Not to this even day. A tambourine. Not oh oh listen, I play a mean tambourine. My sh my hand game is amazing. So yeah, I play tambourine. Yeah. And how would you describe your music now? Um I would say it's island I wouldn't say island pop. I would say pop fusion because I always incorporate different sounds and that's just who I am as a person. That's every day I wake up in London, that's how I grow. I grow around Muslim, Sikhs, black, white. So I incorporate these kind of sounds into my music with a very pop formula, but with different fusions, being from a Jamaican background. Your new song, mm -hmm. No Woman Cry. No Woman No Cry. No Woman No Cry. Woman No Cry, sorry. Woman No Cry. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a play on the Bob Marley song. Yeah. But but it, it, it tackles a particular theme. You want to explain, first of all, the lyrics mm -hmm. and then explain for us the music video. Firstly, I recorded that at Plum House Studios. Um, it was a 24 hour session. Uh, if you work with me, you know that I just don't know how to stop when I start. And I was working with um, an amazing artist called Beam, an amazing songwriter as well. And uh, the beat came on and I just started to freestyle because that's that's always my process. I just freestyle everything. And I remember just like, I keep a weapon now, man. And then he looked at me and I looked at him and he was like, well, what was that? And I was like, I don't know. And then it just started from there. But that day, pri I mean, prior to us recording that, we was talking about relationships and talking about what we go through and stuff and how we feel. And that was just the vibe I was feeling at the time, honestly. And I kind of wanted to tap into my past and some experiences that I endured, which was um, domestic violence. And this was like the perfect song. When you said domestic violence, a uh, relationship. Yeah. And you channeled all your energies into this. Does that make you feel emotional in any way? Yeah, it does. I mean, it was my manager, Ryan, who really encouraged me I was like, yo, it's okay. Like, it's okay to have these experiences. Like, you can speak about it. Because if I had my way, I will just record it in the studio and no one would hear it. He was like, no, you know, let people hear your message and what you have to say and who you are as a person. So currently, you're what's called a fresh artist. Yes. You're just coming on the scene. Yes. How do you want your music to be received and interpreted by the audience? Like, who's your fan base i always say that i want i love women like i love and men as well you know i'm i have great relationships with both but i i want the 
the woman who is trying to uh, create a better life for herself and doesn't use her past as an as an excuse. Um, black, white, every relation, like every uh, re religion, like just very like multicultural. That would be my ideal type of audience. And how would you balance being who you are? And and I just heard some music mm -hmm. that's incredible. Um, I can imagine it's going to appeal to a wider audience. But yeah. how how would you or how will you mm -hmm. balance? who you are as a, a UK girl mm -hmm. with music that's gonna appeal to the world. I think that life has a, God has a funny way of setting uh, your life up for you. And I feel like when I look back at uh, the people that I've encountered, the people that I'm around, how I live my life, I think that it's prepared me for the type of music that I want to make um, and with the type of people that I wanna reach. And it's not me being someone that I'm not, it's actually who I am and how I live. So me making world glo global music, it's not far-fetched because I'm around different races and cultures and creeds every day. So it's, it's, it's who I am. Have you done any performances yet? I have. I actually um, was an opening act for OMI. We traveled the world between 20... You're just casually dropping names. <laughs> OMI, <laughs> the superstar. Omi. Yeah, I know, right? It's my bro. Omi. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's amazing. And a lot of his um, success inspired me, even like the way how I started to write. Being on tour and being an opening act, you understand uh, how the audience respond to music. You understand how a hook, uh, how it translates into how the audience uh, received the music, just things like that as an artist. That really helped. So, um, yeah. That uh, so I toured with Omi, which was amazing. We toured the world. I mean, from India to China to Japan to Jerusalem, like everywhere. And um, yeah, I performed. So before you have your first hit song, you tour the world. I know, which is like random. It's like it's pressure? very di yeah. to me. It was just like a really. S I mean, God is amazing, of course, but like it was crazy because I don't know much people who. My first show was China, in front of like I think it was ten thousand people. Wow. Yeah. So Omi got fans in China. Oh yeah, he's he's. I was just behind him, like, oh my god, like, wow, look, like, what? This is crazy. What are what are, like, when you get success? Yeah. And you're who you want to be. What does that look like? That's a really good question. Um, always humble. Always for the people. Um, I want my music to speak volumes in people's life I want it to help encourage I always say I have a mission for this part of my career to help a thousand women just within charities and stuff like that that's really uh, heavy on my heart um, I want my music just to be a global sounding music that's something that I want yeah I can't help but notice you're from the UK yeah but you came to Jamaica to yeah. make music yeah why well, Jamaica's one of the best places, number one, <laughs> and has the best food, because I love my food. But um, obviously, like, I came to work with um, specialists um, in a period of my career as well, because he was managing Omi, and I was brought on tour with them, so that's how it all started. And then now, Ryan, I'm here making music again, so yeah. Have you seen any Jamaican artists that you like? Oh my God, I love so many. Um, Leela, Leela I.K., Savannah, obviously Skilly, TJ, um, D D Diani, is that how I say his name pronounced? I'm so Dijani. Bad. Dijani. I'm so bad with pronunciations. Please, I'm so sorry. Dijani. Um, I don't know if I have it right. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> right. Um, oh, my God. There is so... Um, Shensia, she's amazing. Um, there's so many artists to name, but those are just a few. Yeah. Who's in your top five favorite artists of all time? Wow, that is a hard question. Um, love Beyonce. Love her. Love Sade. Love her. Um, okay, one of my favorite songwriters is Dolly Parton. Random, but yeah, I love her. Um, 
Mm, top five, Beyonce, Sade. Can we come back to the other three? <laughs> no. Squeeze it out. Okay. Um, there's, there's two left. Beyonce, Sade, Sade. Dolly Parton. Um, I would say Bob Marley, of course. And Fela Kuti. I love his music. I love what he stands for. Mm. Yeah. That's a nice, diverse mix. Yeah. You're from the social media era. Yes. Are you a Gen Z or a... Yes, uh, I am. I would you're be. You're Gen Z? Yeah. Okay. You're Gen Z? Yeah, I would be a Gen Z. Years? Yeah. Okay. So I'm a Gen Z. Yeah. All right. So you're in the social media era. Mm -hmm. Do you have a social media strategy for your music? And what, what does that look like? Um... I think it's to con be consistent. I think that's just the number one thing. Put out music, be consistent, ask your fans, ask your audience what they want from you. You know, use, um, use the social media platforms as your circle time of just like feedback. And I think that's the biggest strategy because they also are a part of your journey. So when you just become completely secluded, and it, it's very easy to be secluded as an artist. You just want to focus on the art and just be in the studio. But these are the people that you need uh, to be a part of this with you. So I think the biggest thing is just like inclusion, uh, asking questions, posting regularly, being consistent, and finding new ways, innovative ways to be different. Different. I heard a song, a couple of songs just now, and you, you do a lot of work with Beam. Yeah. Who I consider he, he has a Fantastic. different yeah. style, right? Yeah. What is that like working with Beam, and and discovering new sounds? We are very very similar. Um, we take our work extremely serious. We're masters of our craft, and we never stop studying. And with Beam he pushes me to be better so when I'm in a room with him like I sit and watch him and be like okay I need to be better so and and yeah that that's what it's like working with him it's amazing honestly yeah you have to be ready to work with him there's no just sitting down and just hoping things just go by no you you have to really step up your game women tend to have uh a more difficult time in the music industry. Yeah. Simply because um, to go on stage, you need a whole wardrobe. Right. You need makeup, you need earrings, you need shoes, everything. You're more scrutinized. Yeah. Just physically. Yeah. But also as a woman, you balance several things, including being an artist. Yeah. How are you navigating the industry as a woman mm -hmm. to, to make sure that you keep your power? For me, personally, it helps just like knowing who I am and I'm still growing and still understanding myself as time goes on. Um, I'm here for one thing, especially when it comes, I'm here to do my job, I'm here to work. Um, and that's what I do. And I haven't really faced much issues in that department because the energy that I give off as soon as I come in the room, it's, I'm assertive, but still very polite and humble, but I'm here to work, I'm here to do my job. And that's just the most important thing. That's it. So you're the Beyond Selfie family. <laughs> they would say. They would say. <laughs> I try not to. No, I don't. I mean, me personally, like, I love being a woman and being beautiful and looking good and stuff. But there's more to me than that. I want my talent to speak for itself. Um, and that's just who I am as a person. I don't really let that stuff kind of get to my head. Like I want to be known for something that to me is important. Do you plan to drop? Do you plan on dropping an album soon? Uh, you have to ask my manager, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> I don't know yet. Yeah, I should. Do you have an album's worth of work? We have albums worth of work. Yeah, albums. Yeah. Who who have you worked with other than Beam? Who have you worked with of note? Um, I have worked with Beam, I have worked with Afrobee, I have worked with um, A1 and J1, I have worked with, oh gosh, um, many UK artists, to name, like a lot, yeah. A lot of Jamaican artists, and Americans, especially. Yeah. Omi, yeah. Say that again? And Omi as well, sorry, yeah. yeah. Of course, my brother, yeah. A lot of Jamaican artists, they 
don't value a manager you come in the game with a manager how important is that role and why it's everything yeah it's everything i can't do this on my own um listen no one is even obliged to help you in life so when you have someone helping you like you better be grateful for that so to have a manager who's willing to help you to take you to the next level it's it's such a um a release for me as an artist i can go and do my job while he handles the stuff that need needs to be handled for me to get to the next level and it takes a team it takes a village like you can't do this by yourself personally that's what i think so having a manager who has your best interest at heart is everything because now i can be free and creative and not have to worry is my manager like this or is he i know that's being taken care of and it and it is now that you're free and creative and um beyond the situation that created that music video um like what does that freedom look like to mm -hmm. to finally feel free? I don't do you like you do me when you say it, you don't mean it, you just do it. from this situation yeah. my past and generally you, you mentioned all the freedoms yeah it just what feels like mean? peace it feels like peace you're able to relax you're not as I'm, I mean I still feel anxiety that's something that I speak about a lot through my music I still feel anxiety um, that comes a lot but on the most part it's peace that I feel and peace allows me to somehow tap into places um, that make me happier that allow my music to have different inspirations and allow my music to be it allows me to create from a different space it allows me just to be like a woman from a different space not so uptight a bit more soft more loving like stuff like that which is important especially as a, a woman like when you go through these things you become like super hard and cold and masculine to, to feel a level of peace you get to and you see things a bit more differently. You don't feel like everyone's always trying to attack you or it's like a lot of stuff that comes with these things. How do you prepare for on stage? How do you prepare for a live show? Um, well, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I'm still working on that because I get very nervous. But prayer, prayer is like always my thing. Prayer, speaking to God and just like being calm and just understanding like, no, this is what you're meant to do. Because if you wasn't meant to do this, this opportunity wouldn't be here for you right now. So I always have to talk to myself in that kind of way um, and be very intentional so that people could feel that with, through the music or when I'm on stage. Do you want kids? I do, I have a child, I have a boy. Do you find that music is like childbirth? <laughs> um, music, it's completely different. I mean, yes, I, f I find music spiritual and I feel like having a child is very spiritual as well um, in many aspects, but it's very different at the same time, if that makes sense. Yeah, no. It's different in the sense of when, you're, when you are a parent giving birth to a child, everything you've been carrying this child for nine months and everything that is you've created this child this is everything within you do you understand 
um, and it's yours. But when you, it's similar in a sense with music, but then you give it out to everybody. With your child, you're not giving it to everyone, it's still yours, that's how I look at it. But with music, you have to also learn, you, you have to learn that it's a business. So once you've given that up, it's no longer yours, it's for everybody. And you cannot, it's hard not to be married to, to the song because it's everybody's song now. So it's similar, but it's different at the same time. What do you expect to achieve from working in Jamaica this time around? Um, great relationships, more eyeballs. You know, I want more people to know me on the island and just working with some more producers and just meeting people like yourself, you know? Just for people to see who I am, that's just like being more visible is important, yeah. Dope. Thank you so much, Thank Laurel. Thank you. Thank you for having me, I appreciate you. This is dope. And check out her music everywhere on every platform. What's your next single? My next single is going to be a surprise. I keep a weapon, now I'm on the gray I, I was down, I was up with you I, I feel like you're doing it Since you went away Since you went away I ain't fucking with nobody, yeah, yeah, yeah Since you went away I ain't messing with nobody, yeah, yeah, yeah The way you do I used to be the type to be riding away for somebody like you Even now it's so tight, know we had a cut ties But I didn't wanna make it official till we seen both sides Ooh, and I waited for the day that you lie, yeah, yeah To my face you say shit like Ooh, I didn't mean to get a rise Since you've been away This time I might fuck up with somebody else Yeah, yeah, yeah Since you went away Ooh, ooh Since you went away Ooh, 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 ooh I don't do you like you do me When you say it, you don't mean it You just do it, you Hey, hey Now since you've been away Even though it's so but I didn't wanna make it official till we seen both sides But I didn't wanna go In my heart I had to know I had a feeling like ooh, 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 ooh. Feeling like you're doing something you should be doing You ain't acting like you usually do And your cell phone facing down, what the fuck you doing, yeah, yeah I, I keep a weapon, now I'm on the gray I, I was down, I was up with you so much I could die I you was down, I was up with you ooh, 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 ooh. I don't do you like you do me When you say it, you don't mean it You're just doing you hey, hey. Now since you've been away I've been out the way you do ooh, 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 ooh. I don't do you like you do me When you say it, you don't mean it You're just doing you hey, hey. Now since you've been away 